and members of the Jehovah Witness congregations across the state. KDK's Shelley Bors is live for us now with the details on the announcement and the case against a local man. Shelley. Yeah, Lindsay, Attorney General Josh Shapiro said four men have been charged, including one from Butler County. And as you said, all four men we understand are Jehovah Witness, and we're told that they used their faith to gain trust of the victims. Now, the investigation started in 2019 after the Attorney General's office received a referral from a district attorney in the Commonwealth about allegations of sexual assault against minors. Now, in the course of the investigation, it was learned the four men were members of the Jehovah Witness religion. Now, those four men include Jesse Hill, formerly of Berks County, now Georgia, Jose Serrano of Lancaster County, Robert Ostrander of Cambria County, and Eric Elam of Butler County. Now, three of the four men were taken into custody this morning. Now, we're told when officers went to the home of Elam, he barricaded himself in a bathroom and killed himself. Shapiro talks about the importance of these arrests during the news conference. Children who have a right to grow up in a safe community, but were defiled by members of their own congregations. Now we'll have much more on these arrests coming up in later newscasts. The 49th investigating grand jury has voted on and approved presentments for charges related to four individuals for committing sexual abuse throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Before I go forward, I'd like to introduce the public servants who stand with me here today. Executive Deputy Attorney General Jennifer Selber, Chief Deputy Attorney General Kirsten Hine, Chief Deputy Attorney General Ron Eisenberg, who's not with us but did important work, on this case. Assistant Chief Deputy Attorney General Dan Dye, our lead prosecutor on this case, and Supervisory Special Agent Doug Hilliard. I also want to make mention and give thanks to the members of the grand jury. We appreciate their service. These are independent citizen grand jurors who participated in this process, reviewed and came to their own determination about evidence, and returned these charges that I'm here to announce today. As many of you know, our office takes the abuse of children very seriously. We have arrested over 500 offenders for taking advantage of and exploiting children all throughout this Commonwealth. And that work continues here today. The cases that we are here to announce are deeply disturbing. The allegations, hard to imagine while all sharing one common tie. The 19 victims and four men who are being charged with sexually violating them are all members of the Jehovah's Witness organization. Most of these defendants use their faith and church to gain access to their victims, to build their trust, and then molested them. Children who have a right to grow up in a safe community but were defiled by members of their own congregations. Some defendants only looked as far as their own families to commit their abuse. My office will not stop until these defendants are held accountable for the crimes against innocent children and until justice is achieved for these courageous survivors. This investigation began with a resource referral from a local district attorney's office back in 2019. Based on that referral, our office undertook the investigation of allegations of sexual assault involving members of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Throughout that, we learned of several incidents of sexual assault committed by different members of the Jehovah's Witness religious organizations. And as a result of our three-year investigation, hundreds of hours of grand jury testimony and dozens of witnesses, we filed charges against four individuals. I can report that early this morning, three of those men were taken into custody. One was arrested in Pennsylvania, one in the state of Georgia, and one in New York State. I want to thank the honorable men and women of the New Windsor Police, Butler Township Police, and the Coffee County Sheriff's Office in Georgia 
for their assistance in today's apprehensions. I will now go through each case individually, but encourage you to read the presentments, which will provide a greater level of detail of the crimes and the criminal counts that we are here charging today. First, Jose Serrano, 69, of Lancaster County. During the investigation, it was determined that Jose Serrano used his influence and common faith to sexually molest at least six minors, including his own daughter. He confessed to committing many of these criminal offenses to members of his community and to the grand jury. Two of Serrano's victims testified in front of our grand jury, providing detail about the abuse that they suffered at his hands, which included groping that escalated into forcible rape. Serrano's own daughter testified to the grand jury that her mother would remind her to lock the door at night if her father was around. Serrano was charged with aggravated indecent assault, indecent assault, and endangering the welfare of children. Jesse Hill, 52 years old, formerly of Berks County, Pennsylvania, and now a resident of the state of Georgia. The grand jury heard testimony that Hill used his milling business to lure young boys in his Jehovah's Witness congregation with promises of alcohol, marijuana, and pornography. He lured them to his property for parties in the 1990s. He built a rapport with these victims, taking them to movie theaters and area malls and providing them with gifts. As time went on, Hill would expose himself to the children. He would grope them. He would force them to perform oral sex. Our investigation identified at least 10 victims of Mr. Hill's sexual crimes. Hill made statements admitting to many of these crimes. Jesse Hill is charged with rape, involuntary deviant sexual intercourse, and corruption of minors. Robert Ostrander, 56 years old, formerly of Cambria County, now a resident of New York State. Ostrander's abuse began in 2006 and was at first physical. This abuse was directed at his family. The grand jurors heard testimony from his stepdaughter who said that by 15 the abuse became sexual, groping and then wrestling and then eventually sexual assault. Ostrander and his family, including his stepdaughter, were active members of Jehovah's Witness congregation. As a result of that membership and the relationship that he and his family enjoyed, his stepdaughter became friends with another girl Ostrander was given unsupervised access to. He exploited that access and sexually assaulted her as well. Ostrander is charged with indecent assault, endangering the welfare of children and corruption of minors. All of the charges against these three defendants have been filed in the corresponding counties of Lancaster, Berks, and Cambria, and will be prosecuted by my office, led by Dan Dye. And finally, Eric Elam, 61 years old, of Butler County. The grand jurors heard testimony from Elam's daughter about the sexual abuse she suffered, including being forced to perform oral sex. She told the grand jury about her father's practice of using sexual molestation as discipline in the house where she was growing up. <clears throat> she reported this abuse to her mother and to other members of her community. Through the documents obtained during our investigation, we obtained a summary of a meeting where Elam told others that the accounts of sexual assault must be true if she said them because, quote, his daughter does not lie. Elam was charged by my office with rape, involuntary deviant sexual intercourse, aggravated indecent assault, and endangering the welfare of a child. Early this morning, when agents from our office and local police in Butler County attempted to take him into custody, he retreated into his bathroom and killed himself behind closed doors. 
no law enforcement officers were harmed in the process. This is tough work, and I commend the incredible prosecutors and agents here in my office who do this work day in and day out. And again, thank the members of the grand jury for their important and meaningful work. These are the types of cases that haunt us. They leave an indelible mark on our souls. And as prosecutors, as people of faith, as parents, we can't escape the impact that these cases have. These 19 children, they deserved a place to grow up in peace, not to be preyed upon. This is an abuse of trust, an abuse of power. And I'll remind you that no matter what power you cloak yourself in, everyone is accountable under the law. And if you abuse a child, I want you to know that the Office of the Attorney General here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will find you and we will hold you accountable. As we do more and more of these horrific cases, our agents and prosecutors continue to get better at uncovering these crimes. While some of the crimes that these men committed can't be charged due to the statute of limitations, we won't fail to hold them accountable for the crimes that we are charging them with here today. These four presentments lay out the nature of our investigation, but I want you to know this investigation is very active and ongoing. I will not comment on these cases or any other matters related to this investigation beyond that at this time, but I will repeat our call to anyone who has suffered abuse. We want you to know that we are here and we are listening. We are urging anyone who has had a similar experience to come forward to tell us your story. We're here to listen and we will act. Your case won't be swept under the rug. Your experience will not go unheard. This investigation is intensive and laborious and as I said a moment ago, ongoing. We have found victims, we have heard their voices, and we have corroborated their complaints and our work continues. Today we have the opportunity to reach out and to publicly ask if anyone has information regarding similar allegations of sexual assault, please contact our office immediately. We have established a special hotline just for you. That number is 1-888-538-8541. Again, that special hotline we've established just for you is 888-538-8541. For one. And with that, I'll do my best to answer your questions with the understanding, of course, that I'm constrained in what I can speak of due to the nature that this investigation is active and ongoing. Right now, are there other suspects that you're still investigating? And do you have any reason to believe that nationally this could be a bigger national case with more suspects in other states? All I can say is that our case is active and ongoing, and I'm obviously constrained today uh, based on what is written in these presentments. And I think as the prosecution begins, um, more information will be presented as we make our case, um, which may help address your questions. Go ahead. Um, I just want to be clear. Um, you said that all four of the men charged were uh, Jehovah Witness, is that correct? They were involved there, yes. So do you think it's something within that um, religion itself? I mean, because these men were not from the same area. They were from different counties. I really can't comment beyond what I've already said and beyond what's in the four corners of the presentment. And as I said a moment ago to your colleague, as we move forward here, as the prosecution begins, I think more information will be presented as we make our case. Thank you all very much.